Good morning to everybody. And um, if you're here for the first time, a very special welcome to you. And we hope that you'll be able to stay on afterwards when we will have the opportunity uh, to have a chat, an opportunity to grab yourself a coffee. I'm sorry we can't serve you, but uh, <laughs> if you want a coffee, you can serve yourself. And just stay on. And if you want to share thoughts uh, or prayer requests or raise a question or add something to what we've shared in the service, that's all very much appreciated. So just know that you are very, very welcome today. Uh, and if you've not met us before and you're not sure who's who, my name is Barry Osborne and with me is Gordon somewhere. Banks. Can you find? <laughs> I'm here, Barry. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. Okay. So we're here as usual and we'll be sharing in the service uh, as we go through and we hope that you'll uh, be able to interact. But we're welcoming you today uh, with our theme. I don't know why it's still saying the 8th of November. I did alter that, but somehow it's not uh, saved it. So it's not the 8th of November. It's actually the 16th of November, 15th of November. Get it right in a minute. And our theme today is about disagreements. So we're talking about that Barney with Barney. And what's all that about? Well, we'll find out in a moment. But before we go any further, we're going to pause, be still, and pray. Loving God, we hold before you one another as we come before your word. Help us to be still and hear your voice. Help us to be open to feel your touch. If there are any here today, Lord, that have special needs, we pray that they may find you here. You promise where people gather, you will be there. We believe you do that through this modern technology that though we're scattered we're gathered together and we pray lord that as we gather together in the name of jesus we may know the moving of the holy spirit in our lives in our hearts in our minds in our gathering in jesus name amen amen so uh, just to put a bit of flesh on the theme that we're sharing today um we're referring to a passage of scripture in acts chapter 15 this is uh, this, this is the story, as you um, are probably familiar with, that we find in Acts, uh, where Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, um, but Paul didn't think it was wise because he had deserted them in Pamphylia, um, as it said there, you remember. Uh, and it's interesting, they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. I've heard some commentators uh, saying that actually it was almost coming to blows. <laughs> it was, this, was, this, <laughs> this, this was serious stuff. Uh, yeah. you know? And yeah. they've been such firm friends and been through so much as well yes. you know, to, to come to this p point. You know, it was, it, this isn't just kind of like, I'm a bit fed up with you. This is a bit more serious than that, isn't it? Very, very serious. And, and we don't actually know. I mean, Luke is great that he doesn't paper over the cracks. He tells mm -hmm. us the whole situation in the early church, so good and the bad. So there are other issues of conflict, which we, we touch on in a few moments, but, but he doesn't do that. But we, what we don't know is a lot more behind this. But uh, we'll try and unpack it a little bit more as we go and hope that be helpful but we're going to have a hymn and we're going to uh, invite you if you're muted okay so please double check um, that you are muted okay um, so if you're muted you could sing if you sing and you're not muted you'll probably spoil the hymn for others but here's a well-known hymn it may take a moment or two to come in but it's Samuel Stone's The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. So do sing along with her situation today. Now for our Bible reading, we're going actually to the epistle of James the brother of Jesus, and James chapter 1, verses 12 to 25. And uh, of course, James is very practical. So let's see what he has to say about the aspects of disagreements. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. 
When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then, after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like a shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruit for all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror <coughs> And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And may God bless his word to all our hearts today. Now, Gordon, I, this, is, this is the whole of this passage in Acts chapter 15. Mm. Uh, Acts chapter 15 is a wonderful chapter. There's an awful lot in Acts chapter 15. Uh, but right at the end, we've got this account of this disagreement. I, I hope it wasn't uh, quite like this cartoon illustrates. Uh, could you, would you just like to read it through mm. for us, just so we've got it clear in our minds? Yeah. Uh, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Now, the background of this, of course, is that first missionary journey that they had been on. And on that first missionary journey, um, they had hardly arrived uh, in what we now think of as southern Turkey when, when John Mark decided he would go home and went back. Um, and so that's the background. So now this is the second, the beginning of the second uh, missionary journey. Paul thinks it's a great idea to go back and visit the place where they've been before and where churches have been planted. And so he, he discusses this with Mark, and that's what leads to a dispute because Barnabas wants to take Mark. Paul doesn't think he should go with them. Um, mm -hmm. Gordon, um, I, the, the thing about this is, is really trying to see it from both points of view. How, how, do you, how do you think Paul was imagining the situation? What was his concern with regard? Why didn't he want to take John Mark? I mean, we all slip up, don't we? Yeah. Uh, one of the first things in, in looking at this passage, Barry, that's important to note is the flip round of the names. Because in verse 12, as they come in, in, in Acts 15, we've got Barnabas and <coughs> Paul. But here's the first time we see Paul and Barnabas. So we, we see us, uh, it's almost like the leadership is shifting around where Barnabas has been the leader and the elder. It's suddenly now this uh, Paul is sort of becoming. So that's the first thing. Very, very important to notice that shift there uh, so Paul is obviously saying no I'm you know you've I, I'm no I'm I'm right. never <laughs> right so that's the first thing uh, and then of course uh, remember we don't know why John Mark went back home when he was in Pamphylia but we do know the the dangers we do know that John Mark was from Jerusalem and so here we're going into uncharted Gentile territory uh, and it's going to be dangerous. We know that. That's been their experience. Uh, and so, you know, what you don't want on your team is somebody flaky 
uh, whatever it was uh, that that is you know because Paul you're in trouble and what you don't want is having to you know to care for somebody or whatever uh, yeah if something really untoward happens but really you want good solid people there don't you that uh, are going to stay the course with you because you can't be you know you've got enough kind of deal with everything else is going on not a I, I, I'll tell you what I th I think of I think I think that they're planting churches that are going to be persecuted. And they know that they've already experienced persecution in that first journey, wherever they went, there was persecution. Mm. So they're planting churches and they want Christians to stand firm. Mm. And, and, and it's a bad witness, isn't it? If someone on the team can't stay the course and, and packs up and goes home to mummy, you know, it's, mm. I can understand Paul must have been, uh, I can understand his irritation, but I, I see it from Barnabas's point of view, you know, <clears throat> Mark is his younger cousin and his mum is Mary, where they had the prayer meeting when Peter was in prison. Um, and I could wonder whether Barnabas was coming under a bit of family pressure, really. You know, mm -hmm. here is mum saying, oh, do take him. It's be good for him. Mm -hmm. I also think Barnabas is the great encourager, isn't he? He was the great encourager. He'd encouraged Paul in his ministry, been a great help to him. And I, and I wonder whether he sees something in Mark and he kind of feels he deserves a second chance, you know, let's give him a second chance. And, um, I, and I can see it from Barnabas's point of view. So whether or not he came under family pressure, I think that it's in his character to want to give Mark and, and maybe he cannot, he can't see it from Paul's point of view. And maybe Paul can't see it from Barnabas's point of view. And, 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 and that is really, uh, what what uh, is 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 happening here, um, and um, uh, so that the the the, um, the 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 situation is very fraught with 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 uh, with trouble. So let let's just think about this situation a little bit more and uh, and see what mm. we can what we can tease out of it. Then then mm. Gordon. Yeah, interesting. You said that you know uh, you know why why is it there because. And we we believe the scriptures just aren't filling space. <laughs> There's a reason that it is there. So why is this story in there? Uh, and of course, in some ways, maybe uh, this is not an uncommon story, is it? Um, uh, one of the things that slightly concerns me is, is that, you know, you hear Christians talk about being all inclusive and all loving and whatever, which all sounds wonderful. But, you know, we know that tension is important um, and actually, you know, the, there's nothing wrong with opposition in, in and, but it's how to, you know, at, at the moment, one of the issues, I mean, we've got the big issue, obviously, uh, rumbling on in, in America um, as well, and they've got divisions there. Yes. But one of the other issues for us within the, uh, certainly within the Anglican Church, is the uh, report that's coming out on human sexuality, living in love um, and faith, uh, living in love and faith, that's right, that's coming out this uh, next summer, um, we, uh, which will which has already divided the church and I think will divide it even further, the issues of human sexuality. Um, and, and in going into that, Archbishop um, Justin Welby said, how can we learn to disagree well? So the question is, did Paul and Barnabas, did they disagree well? Or is it a good <laughs> model or a bad model? Yeah. We, don't, we don't know all the ins and outs of it. But, we uh, don't. Oh. But, but we do know historically, again, don't we, going back, you know, we, we were chatting earlier on uh, and looking back some of our very dark history. You just think back, let's pop in uh, Mary and followed by Elizabeth reign, Queen Mary, and then followed by Queen Elizabeth. When the disagreement had come to the point where you were actually taking people and burning them to death or executing them. I mean, that, that, that you know, you don't get more serious disagreement than that, do you? No, I, I think it's always difficult to look back in history and form judgments uh, mm -hmm. because we weren't living there. And I think during Elizabeth's time, um, of course, there was no internet, no telephone, uh, mm -hmm. and she would have been very concerned about the, the, about the nation and, and aware of, 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 of threats and divisions, and so would have come down hard. And I think sometimes our anxiety over situations can exacerbate the situation. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but there is a there is a record of, of dissent within the scriptures. So even in the early church, we have the Council of Jerusalem, which in actual mm -hmm. fact is referred to 
in Acts chapter 15. And in that, there was a dispute as to, over whether the Gentiles had to keep the food laws. And there mm. were differences of opinion. And, and just as Barnabas and Paul were both apostles, there were other apostles. So these people were sort of leading the church, bring, bringing the truth of, of what it means to be a Christian into the church. And in that situation, you know, they would have been anxious to preserve the truth, you mm. know, and, and so easy. It's that anxiety which can drive, drive problems. So uh, it's a human thing, I suppose. And mm -hmm. we need to recognize that there is always a risk. And, and I guess that the multiplicity of all our denominations today indicates that it is quite difficult sometimes for Christians to get on with one another, even though we want to be people of love and to be nice to one another, it isn't always that easy. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and arguments and, 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 and division and problems come. They come in the local church and that's often where there's huge amount of stress. And, and it's mm -hmm. always sad when there's a split mm -hmm. and, and there's, or people that leave, leave the local church. And of course, mm. it happens between churches. I don't think, uh, my experience, uh, Gordon, is that we're not always as nice to one another as we ought. The Bible speaks about preferring one another, considering others mm. better than ourselves. Mm. And, and I don't know where that fits in, you know, whether mm. Methodist churches are happy to say, <laughs> well, we consider the Congregationalists as better than us, or the Congregationalists are willing to say, well, the Anglicans are better than us, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is a failure, isn't there, on our part that has led. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and, and how can we hold to our convictions? How do we hold to the values that we espouse, to the yeah. things that are precious to us? Yeah. How do we yeah. manage that on one hand? Yeah. And on the other hand, work to show that we are one church. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the scripture talks about about maintaining the unity the unity god has already given to us we are made one by the indwelling of the holy spirit in our lives so god makes us one with himself and therefore one with one another but we don't live it out as we all do we mm. and and you know barry you've mentioned there a couple of times the scripture the bible and i hold them to to great esteem and yet sometimes, you know, that's, you, that's weaponized sometimes, isn't it? Um, and, and again, you know, it's because we, we all come to the scripture and we all put on a certain pair of glasses to read it, you know, and, and, and so it is there. But, but, it, but again, we've, you know, we, we've got to look at it, look at it in its full context, uh, discuss and debate what, and that is part of coming back down to this argument, human sexuality, they're trying to deal with that and grapple with it. Yeah. With, with slavery was another one, wasn't it? You yeah. know, is this right? Because we've got no clear mandate one way or the other. Jesus didn't say anything about that one way or the other um, and so sometimes I just get a little bit worried when people sort of say it's what the bible says well uh, you know <laughs> yes but <laughs> I want to say is, you know, is it yes, a case but. is it a case of of what I understand the bible to say and you should yeah, agree with, with me <laughs> yeah which glasses I'm putting on what's yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know the truth is the truth but it's it, it's my truth <laughs> yeah <laughs> agree with my truth that's right um, so, so but I mean there's the things that that there are things, sometimes there are doctrinal things, there are things about church polity, uh, there are all of these things. And I kind of think that sometimes dissent is not a bad thing. You mm. know, sometimes dissent mm. is a good thing. Th through dissent, um, God's work has expanded and grown and so on. Mm. And, and then it's down to us, if we do dissent, is, is not to allow that to, 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 to cause a separation yeah. I mean, within families, we don't always bring up our children the same way as our brothers and sisters or our parents did and so on. And, and it's a case of retaining that, the value and how much we appreciate this. And we should be able to appreciate diversity as well yeah. as appreciating unity. So the challenge is, how do we actually do that? And I wonder whether this is a good moment, Gordon, just to show that uh, screen because you and I as we were preparing this you'd mm. come across a kind of uh, thing that explains how these things 
happen and it might be just useful do you think just have a look at that yeah i think that i think that would be good barry yeah you know just just to see bring that up barry i was also thinking about a capstone that we talked jesus uh, and the tension there because the capstone i think uh, i don't know if it's right but i think of a bridge and that that stone right in the middle uh, and it's the tension uh, and, and the capstone uh, it, it, the tension needs to be there to hold things together as well um and so we've um, we've gone back to our passage from Acts, Barry. So and here we looking, are. So we just need to move on. There we go. And so, yeah, what we were saying is that there's some kind of progression here. Uh, and and uh, th this is certainly been my uh, experience is you begin with a discomfort, maybe a misunderstanding of what someone else is doing or even fear of what they're doing. Uh, so that's where we perhaps begin with. Um, and then the next thing is that... Um, if we move on, it is then we begin to dislike what they're doing because it's making us feel uncomfortable. We don't agree with it. Uh, we don't see, you know, whatever. Um, and then we move on to the next stage, which is beginning to oppose what they're doing. Um, and you can see this is building up. And the next thing after that is that we begin to hate what they are doing and get angry about it. Um, and then we we then move on to being angry at what they're doing and then making them enemies and wanting them to change to our way of thinking and acting or if that doesn't work then destroy them and you can begin to see this in in so many ways in in nations in churches in, in individual uh, lives and family lives as well barry i do wonder as we look at this because I, I just found this such a useful model to think about, to check ourselves. And we talked about opposition and tension being a fairly good thing in a way because it's a creative dynamic or it can be. So is there some way, if we recognize we're on this role, we're on this journey and this is beginning to happen, uh, is there some way we can halt the progress um, uh, and check ourselves and you know have you any sort of experience of, uh, of you know where, where we might say oops hang on we've stepped over a line here and we that's good to some degree to this point but no further we really need to check ourselves on yeah. that one what do you think well I, 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 th I think so and I, I think we were saying earlier when we were talking about Barnabas and Paul uh, the ability to see things through the other person's eyes which may stop the disagreement, but it may, you may end up having to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to agree to disagree, you need to do it in a way that's not disagreeable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. And I think sensing when these things happen, can I just share a personal testimony? Mm. Um, uh, when I left school, I became involved in a mission I did my early training and Bible study, theological stuff, I, I did within that mission organization, which was led by a, a man who had a charismatic personality. He was a gifted preacher, and, uh, but he, he was very critical of others. And uh, he used to say he was a perfectionist and expected others to be perfect. Uh, and so he was a difficult man to work with. And uh, I, I, he was 13, more than 13 years older than me. So, um, uh, it was something that, you know, challenging his authority was difficult. And, and if you tried to challenge his authority, that caused a terrible uh, upset. And so things were re really, really bad. Um, and um, on one occasion, we were taking a service at a church and he was preaching on a particular topic. And I was convinced that he was preaching a pointed sermon at me. And I was so convinced, really so convinced at this, that I, I, I was angry and I'd become angry about this. And I started to, to quietly pray and, and tell God what a hypocrite this man was. And I rehearsed how, how hypocritical he was, how, how criticism, criticizing he was of others, how he, he tore other people to, to, to shreds by his judgmental attitude. And then suddenly I felt the Holy Spirit withdraw from me. And I wouldn't have been able to explain his presence up until that moment, but I felt the Holy Spirit withdrawing from me. And I knew that I was actually guilty of what I was accusing this other person of. You know, I used to work uh, in secular employment for a while. A couple of years I worked in an office where people used to grumble and criticize the boss. 
and that a senior member of staff used to mutter while this was going on. The faults we find in others are most often found in ourselves. So I think mm. that maybe some introspection helps, Gordon, being mm. aware that we're not perfect and that we might have it wrong. Mm. So being willing to listen to people because we might have it wrong. Mm. So the moment you find you're uncomfortable about your relationship, what somebody's doing, try and talk, get them to explain it to, to you. Maybe if it's difficult, take a third person who's independent and might be able to give some help to reconcile. There are organizations, of course, that specialize in reconciliation so that if there's serious problem within a church, you can ask for their help. But mm -hmm. it's stopping it early is the important thing. And that's a really useful list of things that show how things can exacerbate so mm -hmm. easily. So mm -hmm. I think making space to listen and do so open to the fact that you might be wrong, but trying to see it from somebody else's point of view is obviously helpful. And if you end up having to disagree, then don't disagree in a disagreeable way. Mm. And that's so important news, Barry. I know we need to slide, but I think the important thing about this is that, um, you know, we, we have a public face individually if we identify ourselves as Christians or collectively. And in my experience, we don't think of but people are watching us. Yes. <laughs> people are noticing because we, if you like, set ourselves up as being this community of love and faith and, and forgiveness and, uh, and all those things. Uh, and they, they look at us and they just see backbiting and anger. I, no wonder that some people, I, I, I've just said, some of the churches that I've been around, I, I don't wonder that people look and just say, you what? <laughs> you want me to go and join that lot? I've got enough hassles and problems in my life. I don't need to add to them. Um, and so we just need to be so careful yes. individually as well uh, of how we are living and being people of peace. Um, uh, and that isn't just about acquiescing and just saying, oh, it doesn't matter. Things do matter. And we need to be upfront about that. And there are some things, but then how are we actually, it's this thing about how are we actually handling it? How are we actually dealing with it? Uh, and I just think that's so important. And I really want to emphasize to people here this morning uh, and just say, you know, is this for you and in your fellowship? And are, yeah. are, are this kind of, is this kind of model here a useful little um, progressive model here just to think about for a bit of a checkup uh, and just say, you know, can we, uh, can we, if we do need to disagree can we do that well and present ourselves well to witness that's what really uh, concerns me is this is this witness the negative witness that disagreeing well and arguing um you know i there was one church i know where a couple of people actually went out in the church car park and started landing blows on each other i mean you know that's extreme but it does happen and you know what a kind of witness is that you know just unbelievable isn't it Absolutely. Can we just add one word that we haven't talked about, and that's mm. the word compromise. Mm. Sometimes compromising is okay, mm. but be careful about it. Because if compromising is actually making somebody very uncomfortable, you're not really resolving the situation. Mm. So, so just, just take a lot of care. It is mm. so important. And as Gordon has pointed out, let's notice that. It's about our public witness and how easy it is to spoil our witness and hinder someone coming to faith because mm. of our particularity and mm. our stubbornness mm. in holding to a point and not listening to somebody else. Mm. Good point, perhaps, to sing Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, do you think? I think that's good, isn't it? <laughs> they, you know, um, this, yeah, Gordon, this is a recording uh, uh, from, from YouTube, so it will be, will be stripped out, uh, but it's the Dragon School from Oxford and one of the television uh, songs of praise competitions between choirs but i hope it's a blessing to all of us who listen just watch out for the last verse when they uh, do it there's a lovely little descant comes in but if you're muted you can sing along shall we turn to our prayers barry as we've been there uh, be a good place to go now wouldn't it indeed and so well, let's turn to our loving heavenly father in prayer and we begin by praying for all those agencies, both Christian and uh, secular, 
who seek to bring reconciliation, agents of reconciliation, do pray for them. And if uh, many of those are charities, and we know at this time that charities are being very hard pressed. And so we pray for them at this difficult time. Remember in particular the charity of Relate, it brings in uh, um, relationship guidance to people. Um, so we pray a blessing upon them and pray for decisions being made at these straitened times. And we do know that under these conditions as well, tensions are raised. And we do know there's a lot of difficulties, both in families um, as well. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We turn our thoughts to the situation in America at this time, very much a divided nation very much Christians divided, strong opinions. And um, we ask God that you would help those who are Christians in that country to show their unity and their love for one another. And we pray for wisdom. We ask for the current president, that he may have wisdom regarding his response to the election outcome. We pray for humility in the situation, that there will be a willingness to come and acknowledge failure on everybody's part. Lord, there's an awful lot of repentance needed there, as indeed there is in my life and in our country here. So, Lord, we pray, bring healing to a divided land. Lord, in your mercy hear yeah, our prayer. prayer we continue to pray for covid um and in particular give thanks for the initiative from the archbishop of canterbury picking up thy kingdom come encouraging god's people to pray in particular on a thursday uh, but we do pray for the hard-pressed health service at this time and pray right now that if somebody's either coming off a shift or going on to a shift if they're coming off a shift that they will be able to find rest and refreshment uh, and be able to deal with all the things that they've been facing some incredible traumas that are, are just unimaginable to us um, and those going on to shift and and, and again uh, fearful of what they're facing and um, we just pray that you'll be with them father um, uh, and we again think about the tensions that this whole situation is bringing with it, it brings up many good things but it also brings out some of the worst side as well and some of our anxiety and fear and so we do pray for those who are caught up in all of that and as we think of those uh, through covid we pray for those whom are known to us who are sick and needy at this time for our prayers and we just pause just for a moment that you may name somebody quietly in your heart who's known to you in need of a particular touch from God this morning. And it's also good to give thanks to God. And so we pray in particular for Luena Banks, little five-year-old girl suffered a massive brain bleed back in April, whom uh, my granddaughter, who we've been faithfully praying for, and this weekend she is home with her family for a for a break been in bristol hospital since the end of april and discussions are going forward now with regards to getting a home see if we can get a home for christmas time and so we give thanks to god for her healing bringing her back literally from the brink of death and restoring her to her family and we continue to pray for that ongoing restoration to full health and engagement Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And perhaps we can each take a moment just to think of something for which we are thankful um, in our own lives that we want to express our thanks to God. And can we also pray for the life and work of our churches? And perhaps think in terms of, we were thinking about how we can spoil our witness, but we've been encouraged to, to regularly pray for three people who do not know Jesus yet. So let's just take a moment of stillness to name before God those, firstly, those issues for which we're thankful, and then those 
for whom we are naming because we long that they may come to know Jesus. And we gather our prayers together by saying the family prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We've talked about sharing our faith and the importance of our witness. So we want to remind you, as we do every week, of this website, christianity.org.uk. Make sure you know this address. If you've never been to this website, go and look at it and see what it offers. It's really very, very helpful. And during this time when so many people are anxious because of the circumstances, and, and stressed by them. Maybe this is a good time just to point people to somewhere where they will find help. So christianity.org.uk. So thank you for sharing with us today. It's good to see uh, a goodly number coming back with us. Um, welcome to Stay On For Coffee Pot. Um, uh, as often we say, you know, Barry and I are not the font of all wisdom. Uh, we, we have our thoughts and we hope we're true to God and uh, as best we can understand it, but you can come back and you can challenge us and bring your own stories as well. It's always good and how you're doing. I uh, hope you'll join us again next Sunday. Um, God willing, we will be here. That's certainly our plan. Uh, and of course, you're welcome to join uh, Barry on the Tuesday evening Bible study. And don't forget to tell your friends, but just coming back to Tuesday evening Bible study, Barry, just to pick up on that again, just remind people where we're at at the moment. Uh, we've just started looking at 1 Corinthians. Now, there's a church which had all sorts of problems and divisions. So wow. good, 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 yeah, place, so... good place to go. And, and send us your feedback, okay? Email info at ruralmissions.org.uk or you can email me direct as barry at ruralmissions.org.uk or gordon at gordon at ruralmissions.org.uk. Follow us on the website, please, where the link should be up to date, both to the online things and the Bible study, but also the other ministries. Thank you for your press. We've had a fantastic week this week. Really good trustees meeting on Monday. And then on Thursday, Gordon and I shared in a discussion with representatives of an Anglican deanery uh, in the middle of England, where we're trying to uh, offer some help to them at this time and continue to pray for that. And we're very grateful to have received during the course of this week uh, from stewardship. We've received some of the uh, funds that have been given. So they pass those on to us. And uh, we're really most grateful to all those who have as sent donations and you can do so online securely and confidently at www.give.net forward slash 2003 give.net forward slash 2003 and on that note we're out that's our acknowledgements of the various people that have provided resources that we've been so grateful for and we'll uh, in a moment we will uh, unmute you all and um, so that you can all share and chat away 